Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome once again to Bell to Bells, your women's wrestling wire. I'm Mr. Warren Hayes. Thank you very much for joining us today on this continuing collaboration that we have with our friends over at Pro Wrestling Illustrated as we here interview women who were a, who are a part, what am I saying, were, are a part of the PWI 500 this year, 2021, and today I am thrilled to be joined by one of those who made it on the list. Very, very happy to be talking with Edith Surreal today. Edith, hello, welcome, and congratulations for ranking this year. Hi, thank you for having me, and thank you for congratulating me. That's so <laughs> exciting. I can't wait to see it. And, uh, yeah, it, at the time of we're recording, uh, full disclosure, you know, we don't, we're, we're recording before the list is released, and Edith doesn't know uh, where she's ranked. I do. Uh, oh, you do. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but I, I'm bound to the secret, uh, and and despite this, despite that, Edith has agreed to come on and chat a little bit about the past year, uh, and I really appreciate it, Edith. You know, we're finally, you know, moving out of COVID, or at least you know we're waking, like we're waking up from hibernation, right? You know, the winter hasn't completely disappeared yet, you know, but you know we're 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 getting there. Uh, wrestling slowed down quite a bit in 2020. Shows have started running a lot more now. How does it feel to be getting back into the swing of things? Uh, it feels great. Um, you know, last year was really, really tough because I had a lot lined up and then it all went away mm -hmm. and then slowly started coming back. And, you know, we had to get used to wrestling without fans or wrestling with like very limited capacity. Yeah. Um, which was really challenging. I mean, the Cassandra Cup was one of my biggest achievements. If not, yeah, I'll say it's my biggest achievement thus far. And there wasn't an audience there. You know, the matches right. were filmed. We didn't have even have wrestlers ringside. So it was largely silent. Um, quite a challenge as a performer to do that. Um, so I'm just really excited and thankful that we're able to kind of move forward and, um, you know, this past weekend, uh, you know, for when we're recording, this was my first match in four months because, as you know, I was out with an injury. Yes. Um, so, which was, you know, doubly frustrating because I'm just coming back and shows are just blossoming and just happening all of a sudden. It's just like, oh, no, I got to I got to be on the shelf for four months. So, yeah, I'm glad that all of that is behind, hopefully, and, and able to move forward. Well, things things seem to be pretty good. So that, but yeah, yeah, you, you, I don't think you know. Talking with you, obviously, you just you know you just express it, and with other wrestlers that I get a chance to speak with, you know, I think it's hard to underscore. Um, no, it, it's it's important to underscore more like how important crowd reactions are for wrestlers. Like it's it's really part of uh, of what you do and how you're trained to a degree as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um... I mean, there's just one of the many beautiful things about professional wrestling is how it is an interactive performance. Mm -hmm. And we do tailor things to the fans. I mean, the the energy we get back from an audience absolutely lives within the performance. You know, definitely as you're getting beaten down by someone to have the crowd behind you, you feel that energy and that, that finds its way into the performance. And when you are able to harness that power to rise up over your opponent. Um, it's huge. It's huge. And without an audience, it's, it's a challenge. It's still fun. I mean, it's still, you know, it's, I don't think it's any lesser. I don't want to say that, but it's just, um, it's just very different and you have to get used to something totally different. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said, first match back, uh, just this weekend, you were at Effie's Big Gay Brunch, so that must have felt really good. And, you know, you're four years in as a pro, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and listen, I mean, you've trained you've trained with um, a nice laundry list of people, right? Yeah. We've yeah. got Orange Cassidy. We got uh, Chuck Taylor, Ophidian, Cheeseburger, Hollow Wicked. Uh, I, that's, you know, like I said, laundry list, right? And Andrew Gulak. And Andrew Gulak, which is absolutely, that's true as well. Like, I mean, great people, a lot of great talent. How, but I mean, it's very diverse at the same time. Like, how do you, how does such a great or a, like a large and great <laughs> group of people help you evolve uh, into the wrestler that you are today? Oh my gosh. I try to take something from all of them and put it into the performance and put it into my style and put it into what I do. 
Um, they've all helped me in ve very specific areas. And, you know, sometimes things are, are conflicting, right? I mean, um, the things that Ophidian would do are maybe more showy or more elaborate versus the things that Drew Gulak would do is right to the point. Like, mm -hmm. he grabbed a twist on you. Versus <laughs> Ophidian and the, like, Yave style that we learned at the Wrestle Factory is a little bit more showy, a little bit more flowy to get from hold to hold. So they, they kind of conflict with each other. So, um, you know, sometimes there's a place for both of these. But, um, you know, like, Orange Cassidy was huge in helping me with, like, structuring a match and developing the character and fleshing out the character. There's so many elements of Edith Surreal and um, Still Life that are directly from, you know, Orange Cassidy's feedback. And, you know, a lot of times, like, Effie makes fun of me all the time because he says I sound just like him when I'm calling a match. Um, <laughs> so there's definitely that influence there. And, um, you know, Hollow Wicked was, you know, one of my primary trainers at the Wrestle Factory, so I learned a ton of lucha from him, and um, he's kind of like a primary mentor in a way where I have a problem, like I go to him. Same okay. with like someone like Bryce Remsburg, who was very, you know, a huge part of Chikar for a long time, and um, yeah, something from all of them. And, and now with Cheeseburgers, going up to the, the Worldwide Dojo, um, there is certain things that, not that he missed, but just weren't a part of the Wrestle Factory Chikara style. Sure. Right away, CB was able to identify what those things are and started training us in that style. Because a lot of us went there, you know, it's in the same area, so we all migrated to this other school and you can see where things are missing. And primarily it's a lot of like strikes and comebacks and kind of more of that combat-y realness that goes into professional wrestling. Okay. We're not a part of the Chikara style. So he's able to, to act to, you know, help us with that. Sure. And, um, you know, another thing is like the improv element of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Our was not very, uh, we didn't do that all that much. It was much more scripted and rehearsed versus, you know, you go other places and they do it all on the fly. So, you know, professional wrestling is that spectrum in a way. So, you know, that's another thing that he helped with. And, you know, we're doing a ton of improv there. Um, just to get used to, you know, calling it on the fly, as you say. Sure. Um, so, yeah, it's huge. I mean, so, I can't speak enough to being a young wrestler, like making sure you get a diverse um, training experience, travel around, do whatever you can. And the, and the traveling and going to other places and so on and so forth, that indeed is a, it's a big deal. That's really how you, you, you grow and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and you improve as a wrestler going elsewhere, trying out other styles, wrestling other people. Um, and, you know, speaking about your wrestling, you mentioned it a little early, you know, you were, uh, you know, you were in the, uh, the Cassandra cup, which, uh, which, well, I, I think we, we talked about it. No, we did mention it on air, right? Yes. Yes. We did mention it on air. I won the thing. So, yes. You absolutely won it. But you know, you're, that's not the only tournament that you were in over the past year. You know, you took part in the acid cup three as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were enjoy wrestling's, uh, uh, enjoy cup tournament yeah. as well you made it to the semis of beyond wrestling's tournament for tomorrow you won the camp leapfrog christmas trios match as well with boomer and uh molly mccoy so look a whole bunch of a whole bunch of tournaments you've been in is edith surreal a tournament wrestler well i would i you know i think shug dunkerton um the, the tournament mistress i think he christened me oh there you go um, year when I, you know, won my first three tournaments. <laughs> um, and then after that, I haven't won. So um, <laughs> yeah. tournaments are a huge part of like the pandemic wrestling. Cause sure. I guess we have, we do a taping in a day and, and get a lot of matches out of it. So that's like kind of tournaments kind of blossomed a lot, but um, they are, it was such a, such a good experience to get used to that. You know, when you have one match, you just obsess over this one match and you're thinking about it for hours and hours. But when you're in a tournament, especially when you're moving through, you know, you I have I've had many shows where I just had three matches and I obsess over the first one, the second one just kind of happens, and then the third one um has to be the best match of the day. Yeah. And I'm fried and I can't think and I'm tired. And you know, luckily most of the time I think they have been really great. Like I'm so proud of my match with Ashton Starr in the finals of the Cassandra Cup. And like, we were gassed, we were done. And we barely had, 
I don't know, nothing left in the tank. And it ended up being an incredible match that I'm so proud of and just loved working with him. So Well, it was um, it was a big deal. And it was a very good match on top of that. It was very it, it was a lot of fun. And uh, and like you said, you know, kind of kind of a big deal as well. Um, are there any other tournaments that you'd like to sink your teeth into that you're like, like, I know, you know, they come and go, but there's a couple of established ones out there too. Is there anything that you'd like to jump into? Mistress um, of tur- mistress of mistress of tournament wrestling, you are whatever pops up. I would love to do. I mean, I you know, I uh, there's a lot happening with like Ring of Honor and NWA. I would love to be considered for that someday in the future. Um, you know, around here, the Super Eight is a big deal. Sure, women Super Eight. So you know, maybe next year that's something I could be a part of. Like all these things happen while I was hurt. So uh, who knows if I would ever got the call? I don't know if I would. You never know. But yeah, yeah. no, I mean, the, the, the Super 8, I think you'd be a good fit for. Absolutely. It's a, and it's a good tournament. It has a lot of history. Why not? Sure. Um, over the past, at least over the evaluation period for this, right? You've been wrestling a whole bunch of people. You challenged Lee Moriarty for the IWDP, IWTV excuse me, title. Uh, you've wrestled the likes of Masha Slamovich, Allison K, Ashton Starr course uh effie that guy <laughs> mv young as well you wrestled uh, cheeseburger as well dark chic lady frost uh jordan oliver i mean that's that's a nice laundry list who would you say was your or were your toughest toughest opponent or opponents throughout uh, your past year uh allison k i think would be the toughest one really and- Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised. Like I'm, I'm going really, but I mean, it's like you know, no big yeah, shock. He's definitely the toughest. Like you know, the most challenging wrestler, the the bit most physically toughest wrestler. Um, incredibly gifted, mm-hmm. trained in so many different things. Um, so strong, and you know, so she hands down was the toughest. And when I wrestled her, it was at CFU, so we're in a cage with no ropes. So. Um, doubly tough environment and she had no problem throwing me through the cage so uh, <laughs> I would definitely say she was the toughest without a doubt and also like has the most notoriety too so that's sure. very intimidating um, someone who's been on TV and won titles has been around and is feared by a lot of people so she's a vet she's a true to form vet absolutely so I mean every aspect she was intimidating um, to, to wrestle now Let's make a distinction here between toughest and the one you enjoyed the most. It could be Allison, too. You could be like, ah, I just love being tossed around. But, you know, it's like, who did you enjoy most wrestling this year? I would probably say Allison as well. <laughs> just because it was such a challenge. And I learned an incredible amount from her. No doubt. Being in the ring with her. Um, it was a totally different experience going five rounds. Um yeah, because the CFU rules are a little different, right? And uh, it, it, it's it's a great series of matches. and um, But yeah, it must have been a little different just like in that context. Yes, absolutely. To think about how to structure a match within this round formula, um, it was incredibly difficult. There's no precedent for it. And I see my doors opening. I must have ghosts or something. So that's creepy. Are we going, yeah, are we going into a paranormal activity situation? Should I, I, should I, I, ca- should I call the authorities? <laughs> I don't know what authorities you call. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, well, so there you go. So Allison across the board, that was a good one. But you, you've had a great year. Um, you know, wrestling has grown a very strong LGBTQ following, right? Within the community. One would argue that it's been there for a while. But, uh, but the uh, LGBTQ flag is definitely flying uh, more and more strongly on the independence. Uh, why do you think the connection is so strong in your opinion? I mean, my my personal opinion sure. is it's a lot to do with the product that we do. Um, and as a creative person, you know, I'm a visual artist and all that stuff. So I really think a lot about inspiration, um, the things that influence my wrestling style. Um, and more importantly, my like um, character style and how I get my personality and what, what's all involved with that. And a lot of the LGBTQ wrestlers when we were growing up watching wrestling, there weren't many people that looked like us, sure. that we could relate to, that we were inspired by within wrestling. We took those things from elsewhere. 
you know, we took them from music or theater or movies or, you know, ballroom culture, what, what have you. All our inspirations come from different places versus your average independent wrestler on the scene today. You know, maybe they could relate to someone during the Attitude Era or during, you know, early, you know, to wrestlers on TV growing up. They could absolutely see themselves in those people. So there's that influence there. So in some ways, the things that they're putting on has been seen before. Not that they're all copycats or anything like that. I certainly don't mean that. But, you know, with us, we're pulling in so many different elements. So what you see at Gay Brunch and what you see at the Cassandra Cup, what you see at Paris's Bumping, feels very, very fresh through a wrestling perspective mm -hmm. because influences are taken from so many places. Paris's Bumping is so inspired by ballroom mm -hmm. and all the elements from Paris's Burning, from RuPaul's Drag Race, from all of these things, uh, from Pose, you know, all these different places. So it doesn't feel like any other wrestling that has ever existed. So I think primarily that's why it's so successful on a broad sense. Um, just feels fresh. Wrestling's been around for over a hundred years. We're just doing the same old shit in a way, but you know, with this with this new perspective, it feels very fresh. So I think that is the primary reason. But just having like a community um, that's so strong and that we're all building each other up. You know, uh, MV Young is putting on his own shows. Billy Dixon is putting on his own shows. Effie's doing his own shows, and we're all on each other's shows. Like it's not competition. Like sure. Billy on MV's show, MV's on Billy's show. They're friends. They're not competing with each other. They're building each other up. And, you know, maybe elsewhere in wrestling, you see maybe there's competition in a way, whatever. Um, you know, oversensitive men just like competing with each other. We don't have that in the LGBTQ arena. Like, we're just building each other up. So I think that's another reason why it's so successful. Oh, that's fantastic that something that you don't that you don't necessarily think about and you know as you know as a middle-aged cis white dude you know <laughs> i really enjoy i really enjoy the 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 freshness of of shows like the big gay brunch like paris is bumping because it is an entirely different perspective i grew up like i you know i grew up watching friggin you know wrestling from montreal in the 1980s and you're right like you know there's a lot of the, what we do even today is just variants on that. So when, you know, when I can, when I can enjoy shows that offer a completely different perspective, flair, you know, way of approaching things, I dig it. I love it. You know, and I think it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, and it's very um, uplifting at the same time to see that there's different ways of approaching it. And I can, I can get behind that. <laughs> we're seeing a lot of opportunities you know on on uh for indie wrestlers showing up on bigger wrestling promotions you know this forbidden door stuff you've probably heard about it um you know uh, aw impact ring of honor have all been very welcoming to indie wrestlers do you have any aspirations of uh ending up on some of these bigger stages yeah sure absolutely <laughs> dumb question right but yeah you know <laughs> you know, a, a queer out performer to have a platform like that to to reach people and to be, you know, an inspiration, whatever. <laughs> like, um, that would be an incredible honor. Um, but, you know, right now I'm not really like chasing that in a way. Like I'm not, you know, sending emails to be an extra anything. Like there's a lot I want to do on the independence right now. And I'm enjoying that. And I'm enjoying this creative freedom that I have that I, I wouldn't on if I was on TV in a way, you know? Sure. There's a lot more, whatever, it's TV or something, it's fine. But like, I love that I can talk to Effie about who I want to wrestle. I can like pitch ideas to Sheik, to um, to Billy, to MV, to Chris at Leapfrog. Like I can, I can have these really creative ideas and work with people to bring them to life. It's relatively simple. I mean, even like the folks that enjoy wrestling, like I pitched an idea for the storyline with, with Ziggy Hyam and they're like, yeah, great, let's do it. And you know, it's going to be this year long thing. And oh, fun. Um, so it's just, um, I love that I can do that. You know, this isn't, I'm not going to say it's not my job because it's, it is my job. So I don't know. I was going to say that, but it's just like, I'm enjoying this creative freedom that I have right now. And hopefully that makes me undeniable in the future. Sure, exactly. And isn't it nice? You're like, it is your job, but it clearly doesn't feel like a job because you're enjoying it so much, right? I mean, I think we got it. Absolutely. So, okay. 
so let's dream for a second here but you know forbidden door stuff and i appreciate your answer but let's let's dream for a second forbidden door cracked wide open 2022 is coming you can wrestle one person regardless of where they are promotion uh geographical location you have one person you can wrestle who would it be it it's either bailey or sasha oh boy Uh, because i just think back to their their first takeover match like that was i think as a baby face i would it would be a better match with sasha Mm -hmm. but um i love bailey (laughs) so it's just like sure um just that that first takeover match i've never seen an incorporation of emotion that strongly in a match right yeah every single pro wrestler when they win a world title it's a childhood dream it's been something they've been working for their entire lives every single time it's a cliche every time but that was the story when bailey won the nxt title but we all cried when she won that sure it was so full of emotion in a way that I've never seen before, that I've never felt before. And I think with her gift to create emotion in her match like that, um, that's why she's my favorite wrestler on TV right now, um, just because she's able to do that. And I know she's doing some different things and incorporating being, you know, a heel now, mm-hmm. which is different and really showing, I mean, it's really showing her chops as a performer. I agree. Um, but yeah, so either yeah. Sasha or Bailey is is my pick. Was the takeover match was, was that a, was that an important match for you uh, as an aspiring wrestler, or, or was 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 that an, a turning point for you? I don't know if I was even training when that match happened. I I don't remember what year that was. Yeah, no, it, it, it's been a while. But like, <laughs> would it have? But you did see it. Did it did it light something? How significant is it for you? I think it's one of those examples that I look back on and see the, the emotional power of professional wrestling. Um, so I think once I became a performer, it's something I go back to a sure. lot to see how they are um, incorporating emotion into a match. And I also would credit um, when Princess Kimberly won the Chikara Grand Championship as another one of those pivotal moments. I was a fan then. I was, you know, went down to the arena because I live in Philly and bought a ticket i wasn't training or anything or even like aspiring to be a wrestler at that point but she wins this title and in front of me there's this little girl in a princess dress going crazy for (laughs) prince winning the title and beating the evil pumpkin and um i think it was just yeah it was just hollow wicked but like that was incredible that was an incredible moment and i'm just i go back to that because you just see this power of professional wrestling how it's impacting everybody and the emotion of the situation is is just huge. So, um, yeah, that's another one and another performer. I'd love to wrestle Kim someday. Well, like, well, look, the, the the list just keeps stacking up, and you know, wrestling is an exciting place. You know, who knows what can happen, right? There's s- stuff happening recently that we never thought would ever see again, and it's happening. So it's fantastic. But you know, 2021 is wrapping up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have some some goals set for 2022. Do you have anything? Uh, what's on your mind, Edith? What's happening with you in 2022? Down recently, but they're not in front of me. Uh, top of the list, I want to go to Japan. That's, okay. Uh, I you know just I want to go there as a tourist, but I just I want to wrestle there. I want sure. to train there. I want that experience. You know, I love hearing stories from Masha or. You know, with Veda, I was just hanging out with Veda Scott this weekend because, you know, we wrestled at Gay Brunch and just hearing these stories of Japan and all of those things. Like, I want that so bad. That feels so integral in being a professional wrestler to have that experience. So that's number one on the list. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but Wrestling Kim is, you know, Wrestling Kimberly is, is an obtainable goal, I think, in 2022. We wrestle in the same places, so I think that's possible. Mm-hmm. Um I want a belt. I've never won a belt before. That seems really cool. It's a cute accessory. I never have one. I have lots of cups and stuff. Yeah, you have cups and stuff, but you know. <laughs> you can't you can't wear a cup. Come on. Yeah. Well uh, well, hang on a second. Well, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> so I guess the yeah, those are my three goals that, that came to mind right away. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I hope I, I yeah, look, I I feel like uh, like I said, wrestling is is in a good place right now. I feel like all your goals that you've just set up are extremely attainable. I wouldn't see why not. And you're 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 
Uh, you're you're one of our favorites, Edith. We like keeping an eye on on your career, so the belt won't be far away. I'm convinced. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I really want to uh, thank you again for taking the time out of your schedule to chat with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Congratulations again on ranking on the 500. Let everyone know where they can follow you on social media, uh, where they can buy your merch. That's important. Let let it all let it all go. Um, everything is at Edith Surreal. So all social media is at Edith Surreal. No lines and spaces or underscores or anything like that. At Edith Surreal. Uh, Edith Surreal.com. We'll get you, you know, match videos and stuff like that. Um, and that will link to my store, which is Edith Surreal at BigCartel.com or dot BigCartel.com. But you can get there from Edith Surreal.com. It's all there. Uh, follow me on Pinterest. Not enough people follow me on Pinterest. Is that I'm still a, a thing? I'm a prolific pinner. Okay. <laughs> just moved to a new apartment and i'm like restoring it so like there's a lot of really good uh decorating stuff you know i'm quite the interior designer no one gives me credit for that okay so, um <laughs> so pinterest i'm i'm big pinner I'm, I'm i'm making wrestling pinterest a thing <laughs> i'm getting kicked off twitter like because you post blood pictures or whatever so they're shutting us all down so we're all going to move to to pinterest and i'm starting that i'm starting that trend Okay, well there you go. So, so there. I mean, that's that. That's no one ever talks about their Pinterest boards anymore. And I mean, if I can get design ideas for you, I mean, look at this place. This, you know, look, look at this behind me. This stinks. You know, it's like I'll, I, I definitely need some flair for sure. I got you. I got you. I'll do consulting <laughs> services. <I got> you. <laughs> Edith, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much once again uh, for for joining me today. Yay, thank you. This is so much fun. Thank you. And thank you all for watching this video right here. If you, you look, you know the rigmarole, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm Mr. Warren Hayes. And I'll see you next time.